Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers and thank you for subscribing. Um, so, the engine was submerged last year. I cleaned the carburetor, got it running, it ran okay. I informed the owner that he should probably just go ahead and buy a new carburetor because even though I cleaned his, it still had a little mist to it and everything. I, I got it adjusted mostly out. But anyway, so apparently he bought a carburetor and had his son put it on. Mm. So, now he says... I ain't got no spot. So, we're going to at least look at that avenue and confirm that. And then I'll look at his carburetor installation, that kind of thing. So, the engine in question. You want a Spanish? I should be getting a Spanish. Get right here. There it is, a little 15, get yourself a Honda. Yeah, so he got himself one. The carburetor does look new. Hey, looks like most of the oil is still in the cylinder block. What a concept. So we'll get to pulling some plugs and a sparky chickens and a yuppin 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 yuppin. So let me get some tools here and we'll get on this thing. I'll be right back. Now I've got a rag here to knock out some of the sunlight. I've got the spark checker right here. I'm going to have to do these spark plugs one at a time because they've got the skinny uh, post on the end of the spark plug boot. In other words, a regular spark plug like off a champion spark plug won't fit in there. But this spark plug will, so I'll have to do them one at a time. So I've got a rag here to knock out some of the sun. There's the spark checker right in there. Watch right in there. So he's got spark on that one. And that's the way these Hondas and also Suzuki's, that's the way their spark is. It's, it's different than a points engine. Um, it just, it's a thin spark arc. Oh, let me get this guy back in there where we can see it. He's going to be a little harder because he's on the other side. That ought to do. All right. You can see the spark checker. Let me make it a little better. There you go. You should be able to see that. At least I think you're in there. Watch well, right there. So he's got spark on both cylinders. So, let me pop some tri flow in them cellars and see if we get a poofy. This can on goes out. But I got some in there. Let's see if we get a, a little pop. Of course, when your engine won't start, first thing you do is go out and buy new spark plugs. Boy, that gap looks mighty shallow, too. Let me check the gap. Should be around 30. Let's see what we're getting. Yeah. Okay, I got about 25. Let's open that up. So, we opened her up to 30. So, let me check this other one, okay. yeah, it's about 25 too. Open her up to 30. 
These are DR6HS. And I don't know if that's the right one. Normally there's a sticker right back here. Tell me. But it don't tell me. I don't see it. Alrighty. So, get these straightened up. See if we get a Mm, papa on this thing. Here's what I was talking about on this particular uh, spark checker. It has that kind of tip on it. it. What I need to do that type of motor. It don't have that type, which a lot of them do. But we check it on Spocky on Spocky on. Where's what goes where? Well. Think. Well, it will reach, but I don't know if I got these hooked up right. But we'll see. So. <laughs> you right here yeah. I'm just, just going to use this drill I think to see what we get see if we get a poof pop we got a poof pop so most likely we're dealing with a fuel fuel problem so we'll have to trace that down let me find a fitting gas hose unhook get my four cycle gas and we'll go from there I'll be right back okay so I got good spark um, I got good fresh gas hooked up to it now and uh, let's choke her and see what we get Turn that down a little bit. Stop. 
All right, T, here's the little Honda. Four stroke of 15. Open that door. Fumigate myself. Cry by there. And that. a wrap on this one. Excuse me why. Take a swig. Is that a word? Swig? Swill? I don't know. Um I, I don't know what to say about this motor. Uh he came in here now this is the same gentleman whose son brought a six horse, I believe it was, Little Evanroot, or Johnson, one, two, OMC, into me and said, I pulled and I pulled and I pulled. And I said, well, go get yourself some tri-flow and give it a couple shots in the cylinders. See if it'll at least pop. He come back and said, I went and bought the tri-flow. I squirted in the cylinders. And I pulled and I pulled and I, and I pulled and I pulled some more. He said, I don't go. I said, bring it on in here. He brought it in and I sold him the motor. It was a six or eight horse, I can't remember. Good little motor. And uh, I had went through the motor and done it all up. So I know it was a cherry of a little motor. I said, bring it on. Bring it. He brought it to me. I put it in my tank. And I said, well, you know, I probably shouldn't have put it in the tank. I probably should have pulled the plugs and made sure it has spark. And then I said, then I should. No way. Really? So I got the little lanyard with the little man overboard clip that was missing. That was there when I sold him the motor. And I stuck it on the end of the tiller where there was the man overboard stop switch so that when you fall overboard the lanyard's hooked to you and it goes poop and the engine dies. And I said, Mm -hmm. So I reached over in my pile of them and I got one and I stuck it on there. First pull. Boom, boom, boom. Buh. Second pull. So I called him and he came over. What's wrong with it? Nothing. I said, you got to have this. So. The fella that owns this Honda is his father. Interesting. So, what is the number one thing that I deal with on motors that come in here? Um, fuel contamination is number one. 
whether it be lawnmowers, chainsaws, outboards, um, water pumps, pressure washers. Fuel contamination is the number one problem I see with the motors that come in here. Especially in my neck of the woods where it's rainy, windy, yucky, then it turns sunny, then it rains, and, rain, and on and on. So when I first started this little Honda, now it did smoke a little, but remember I put some tri-flow in there. Um, so, I'm guessing bad gas from his source, whatever he was using as gas, was probably old. The octane had probably been reduced and diluted to nothing. Um, bad hose, bad clips, um, who knows. But regardless, he's got to get a bill. I mean, it's my time to go through these things and do a fax check, um, you know, to test for spark, to test for fuel flow, all these things. Um, and in this case, I'm going to call him and try and educate him. Now, the other thing I did when he, when he first called me about the motor, I said, well, check to see if you got spark. And he claims he did that. And he said, I ain't got no spark. Well, the engine had spark. It had the newer capacitor discharge ignition spark, but it had spark. And granted, I have all kind of testing equipment I can test it with, but a regular old spark checker will do it. Um, so, he said he had no spark. He has spark. Um, wasn't sure about the carburetor because his son put it on. The carburetor seems fine. The motor runs fine. The motor starts fine. Um, I have good premium gas, a good Honda hose with a good Honda clip. And my guess is somewhere in that food chain he did not have one of those elements. So. It's a sunny pretty day. But the pressure washers and the lawnmowers keep coming and then I got my Odyssey Honda that's been sitting for the last three four years I got to decide what I'm gonna do with it fix it sell it as is yeah, I don't know but it's also this time of day yeah it's part out the outboards day understand there's a 90 it's uh, got a few good parts on it I'll get and there's a 88 special hanging from my bucket you can see in the back of the little old taco mama Toyota there is some um, bonnets and things and uh, so I'm gonna get a load ready to take out to the old squisher crushing machine in the Mara. I'll take some stuff off. I'll take some more stuff off. But I guess we're going to be crushing. I'll take what I can. Can't keep them all. I'll be back.
getting a load out to the crusher where they can get some musha did. Okay, we are parting out another load. This is a Suzuki DT60. It is a running power head and all, um, but just has, uh, I have run the engine, but the parts, um, for the most part, are worth more um, in parts. I've taken off the starter, the starter bracket, the carb set, the choke, and now I'm going to attempt to pull that flywheel because I wouldn't mind getting that flywheel to go with the starter and the choke and so forth. So I've got a puller rigged up. We'll see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Thor. Thor. That's how it goes. Thor. You don't mess around if I put the Thor on you. My, my flywheel washer nut. Now, on a stand. On a stand. Now I've got a flywheel. Starter, solenoid. Starter brackets. I hope you can see me way over there. Um, I already parted out the 40, um, got everything I wanted off it, lower unit, um, carbs, the reason why this this 40 ran as well it's a, a decent power head but it was one of the saltiest uh, power heads I've had come in in a long time so I decided to part it out um, I just wouldn't want to sell it to anybody it was so salty it had been sitting for years on the back of believe it or not this was a backup kicker the guy had a big giant aluminum like landing craft and he had like two 225 Honda four strokes and this was his backup kicker so it, it just sat for like 15 years on the back of a uh, a boat in the harbor and never got ran so everything was just seized and froze but uh, yeah the uh, Suzuki DT60 I've got the carbs right there um, I guess I need to put that rope start plate with this flywheels. You know, that thing. up on the chopping block. Is this guy? That's a 60s. Oh. 10 horse, what's left of one. But it's got a good lower unit. A um, few other things. Tiller. Um, nice brass encased start kill switch however you want to uh, bell crank brackets mag plates just different things uh, it's got the um, sediment bowl that's glass and all so we'll take that so we'll get some parts there <clears throat> but uh, now you'd say why in the world did I use a puller a little bracket puller such as that 
Uh-huh. Or take that key away if I can get it out of there too. Um, reason why I did that is because my puller is a triangle puller. Well, I have my OMC puller set, but it was just easier that, since this is being scrapped. I just smacked that aluminum bracket there where I was able to get this puller on, and it, it just was quicker and easier. That's why I did that. Because there ain't much else I'll keep on this that I, the coils are shot. Um, we we'll take this Get over here on my rag, man. Little fuel filter. That'll be all I take it out. Uh, the propeller is shot spun. I know that for sure. The lower unit, I'm not sure about. Um, well, when I say I'm not sure about it, I know it shifts, goes in and out of gear and all that, but uh, so old, so salty, been sitting so long, I wouldn't sell it to nobody. It would just be parts. But the carburetors, you know, those are rebuildable. The starter, the starter bracket, and all that's hard to come by on these Suzuki DTs, older two-stroker Suzukis. So all that's worth keeping. Um, the electronics up under the flywheel, I do not need them. I have quite a few. The coils, again, they're old and shot. I wouldn't use them. The fuel pump on there, eh. I've got 50 of them, 30 of them. So, I'm going to start on this guy, and all I'm really going to take off on that is the tiller bracket. Actually, I'll take quite a bit. I want the whole tiller and bracket, transom bracket set up on that, and then I want the lower unit. So, let me get switching out some things. I'll be back. There are the carbonators that I took off of several several part out motors. They're all labeled, tagged, part numbers, model they came off of and year. And so that's them. Now let's go look at the goodies. There's some goodies. Here's what uh, is going to the heap. And here is the Suzuki DT60 flywheel bracket starter and solenoid. So, oh, and I, like I said, I had run that um, DT60, so I know the starter and all at least bench test good. Let's see, let's see. Oh, looky here. There's the lower off the 40. And because I know the history of this salty, salty motor, when it first came in here for repair to me, it had a bad lower unit on it, a cracked lower unit. And I told the fella I didn't have one at the time. Well, he made a trip over to the mainland to Anchorage, Alaska, and he paid even with the broken skeg. And if you can see, there's white paint showing through that blue. It was off of Johnson. It was white. And that's what it's going back on. Um, but anyway, he paid $700 for that lower unit used over in Anchorage. So, yippee ki -yay. And there's the little cutie. 10 horse, 60s lower. The whole thing will need to be taken apart and rebuilt. There's the transom bracket clamp and tiller. 
And then here is a whole bunch of just miscellaneous goodies. All kind of goodies in that tote. And then I will organize those and shelf those inside my conics. And uh, but something that's really cute. Isn't that just a cute shift handle? And a beautiful little glass sediment bulb. Ain't that pretty? That'll clean up nice. The little glass bulby. And I like the ones that have the nylon uh, tightener rather than the old tin ones. But is that outboard art or what? Look at that thing. Look how it's shaped. And, and uh, hey, I got it off complete. Here's Tuffy. It's a little Tuffy. But uh, we got her. A little bit of elbow grease and scrubbing and cleaning and painting. That's a pretty little shift hand. Vintage, oh, baby. You understand. So, so, so the motto goes, save them parts, save them parts. Yummy. Be sure to subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.